Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's RISA Live session. Uh, my name is Ben Follett, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for RISA. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on uh, understanding diaphragms and the different types of diaphragms in our RISA software. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to start off with uh, just a short little PowerPoint here today. And so we have a few different types of diaphragms in our software. So the first type is uh, obviously a rigid diaphragm. Uh, the second, a semi-rigid diaphragm, and then the third, a flexible diaphragm. Now, obviously, the way that we uh, utilize these diaphragms or the way that uh, these diaphragms distribute load obviously varies based on uh, the type of distribution that you choose. So a rigid diaphragm, obviously, is everything on that level is rigidly attached to the diaphragm itself. So there's no distribution of axial forces between points in the diaphragm. And when we apply load to that diaphragm, we apply a point load to the center of the diaphragm, and then that gets distributed out and around. The second type we have here is our flexible diaphragm. Our flexible diaphragm is quite the opposite, exactly the opposite from a rigid diaphragm, and it has, a, uh, has no stiffness in this case. And the load then is distributed not based on any stiffness in the member itself, but also but on a tributary area or a tributary width, regardless of the stiffness of the elements that are connected to it. The final is obviously something that is in between. We have that semi-rigid diaphragm. And so the semi-rigid diaphragm, while maybe not used as often as the rigid and flexible diaphragms in analysis software, um, the semi-rigid diaphragm models the actual stiffness of the member itself for the actual stiffness of the diaphragm. And so we, in this case, set up the actual material properties and the thickness of the plate to calculate the overall stiffness. And so if I go ahead and look at kind of how this load application works, we just have a simple plan and elevation view here for a rigid diaphragm. We'd actually go ahead and apply this load um, to that center of the diaphragm and then basically Everything, every node on that level that is connected rigidly to that center location, um, you know, essentially with maybe if you can imagine an internal rigid link, um, the load would get distributed and then all of those elements would move together, hence the rigid nature. The next, obviously, is a flexible diaphragm. Again, we have load applied at the center of the diaphragm in either the X or the Z direction in this case. And then because of the tributary area, so in this case, we have these uh, walls, orthogonal walls here that are perpendicular uh, to the load here, we can see the distribution that we have here. So we've got these, the load just being kind of drugged through as line loads now on these walls. And then in the opposite direction, the same thing, load being drugged through these uh, uh, as, as line loads on top of the walls in that other direction. These we call transient distributed loads. And we'll go ahead and look at this um, kind of in real time in, uh, in our software. The final is using semi-rigid diaphragms. And the distribution or the application of load depends a little bit on if you are applying a wind or seismic load. So wind load in this case is just applied as a line load on the edge of the diaphragm in the x or you know positive x negative x direction or positive z negative z direction so that's pretty pretty clear and then th that load is then kind of drug through the entire uh, plated diaphragm the other option though is an earthquake load so if we have an earthquake load because there's mass that is associated with um, certain elements and because we have um, the, the load then is at the location of that mass. We have point loads that are assigned at the top of the column where the mass of that element kind of interacts with the diaphragm. And then in addition, we have, sorry, jump backwards there. And then in addition, we have the area load that then is applied to the diaphragm itself that represents basically the load for the mass of, its, of the diaphragm. And so we can see that in the different directions if we go ahead and look at that. So we have that same type of load in all the directions for earthquake. Now, if we want to go ahead and look at this in real time, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here to my RISA floor model. So where we want to define uh, these diaphragms begins in RISA floor. Now, we'll look a little bit later about how we can define a diaphragm solely in RISA 3D. But in this case, I'm using a diaphragm um, when using RISA floor and RISA 3D together. And so to start doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the diaphragms uh, spreadsheet to open the diaphragm spreadsheet in uh, Risa floor. And so in that, we have a few different options. So you can see here, I've got a few different levels. And so I've defined the type of diaphragm then, semi-rigid, rigid, or flexible, at each of those levels. So for this particular case, I've got some composite floors and then a 
also a metal deck. So on the lowest composite floor, the largest composite floor I've chosen in this particular case, and that's this level that we're looking at here, I've chosen that we're going to do a semi-rigid diaphragm. Now, when I institute that semi-rigid diaphragm, we can also see that some of the options become available. So we need to set a material. So I'm just setting a generic material in this case, choosing a generic concrete material so that I have the properties of that material associated with this level. Additionally, I'm going to go ahead and set a thickness. Now, this thickness is the thickness of the plate then that is going to be used for the semi-rigid diaphragm. Now, in this particular case, I have a four and a half inch concrete uh, composite deck. I wouldn't want to choose to use the entire composite deck because really, you know, the flutes, I don't have a, a full kind of thickness, a full depth of four and a half inches of concrete. So I'm making the decision to say, well, I have two inches of continuous concrete above the flutes. If I have maybe a two or two and a half inch deck, I'm going to use that because I know it's always going to be there no matter where I look in the model. And so I'm going to use that two inch thickness as my plate thickness for my semi-rigid di diaphragm behavior. There's no other options that I have to set here for my rigid diaphragm or my flexible diaphragm. And so when I'm ready, I can go ahead and uh, assign those different diaphragms to different levels. So if I'm looking at um, this, we've got them assigned at each of those floors. I would run the analysis. I already have the analysis run in this particular model. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually jump into Risa 3D using the director. So I'll go ahead and choose director to Risa 3D. In this case, we just need wind and seismic load because I want to be able to show how that wind and seismic load is then applied. So I'm not going to really pay a lot of attention to how I'm going to add these things or what I'm going to choose as far as the code is concerned. So I'll go ahead and just click OK for wind and OK for seismic. The results are just going to get gathered, basically just parsing through all the force results uh, so that we can do the takedown into then RISA 3D. So once, our, once we start to open the model in RISA 3D, obviously if you're familiar with the way that RISA floor and RISA 3D interact together, we're going to get just the lateral model here. So I have just the lateral elements that I assigned. So let me turn off some of these nodes so we can see a bit better and maybe turn on kind of some rendering here so we can see the lateral elements. So I have some brace frames, some moment frames. I've got some shear walls at different locations. The first thing though I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on this button to toggle on the display of the diaphragms. And so, we have a coloring uh, difference between the different diaphragms. So you can see here our semi-rigid diaphragm down here denoted in this greenish color, our rigid diaphragms in the purple, and then finally in this maybe orangish brownish color is our flexible diaphragm. And so we can actually look at that. So if we open up our diaphragm spreadsheet, and if I go ahead and make this a bit smaller here, we can see that each diaphragm has different information assigned to it. So we've got our mass, our mass moment of inertia, our center of mass, we can see that each diaphragm is you know, flexible, rigid, or semi-rigid, so we can actually make changes to those diaphragms, and then also the information that is assigned to that based on those semi-rigid diaphragms. So we have that generic concrete and that thickness assigned to those levels. Now, if I go ahead and enable the loads, so I have loads that are chased down from RISA floor into RISA 3D, that's standard workflow. And I can go ahead and turn on, you know, we see all of our dead loads that are chased through, but I want to go ahead and start to look at lateral loads in this particular case. So if I go ahead and choose BLC8, which is our wind load in the X direction, we can see here that I've got four point loads. So basically I have a point load applied at the diaphragms for all the rigid and flexible diaphragms. Now these point loads are the initial load that was created from that wind and seismic load generator. And before we go ahead and run the analysis, we're just getting that point load assigned at that kind of center of, uh, of the diaphragm. Now I can also go ahead and look at the semi-rigid loads that are being applied. So if I scroll down here, I have BLC28, which is a semi-rigid wind load applied then exactly like we saw in our PowerPoint, applied to the edges of the diaphragm here. And so this then allows for the load to be applied. And then because we're gonna mesh this diaphragm, it's gonna get dragged through to the lateral resisting systems in that particular diaphragm. Finally, we can also go ahead and look at the semi-rigid, or excuse me, we can go ahead and look at the earthquake load. So if we look at the earthquake load in the X direction, again, at these upper levels where we have rigid and flexible diaphragms, we just have a point load. But down at the semi-rigid diaphragm, we can see exactly what we saw before. In this case, though, we're getting two types of loads. We're getting um, some point loads at the tops of columns. Those are denoted here in blue. We're getting some line loads at where we had beams. So basically, those line loads based on you know, the, the information at those different beams and that different internal floor framing. And then finally, the area loads here kind of denoted in green at, on, 
as an area load applied on the diaphragm itself based on the, the, the material and the, and the uh, thickness of slab that we have there. So with all of this applied, basically we could go ahead and run an analysis to see how these loads then get distributed to various elements inside of these diaphragms. So I'm going to go ahead and really quickly just run a simple load combination. Now in this particular case, um, I actually have set up a batch co combination and we ran the batch combination and we have um, some batch results for multiple load combinations. So if I go ahead and look at uh, running this, so we can solve this. Yes, I'm going to lose results, but that's okay. We're going to get all of the results for those different load combinations. I just chose a few in this case just to kind of be representative of the wind and seismic loading that we have so that we can see then what kind of a breakdown that we have from this applied load on the structure. Now, when we go ahead and look at this, what we're going to look at is what we call transient loads. So those transient loads, like we saw in the spreadsheet, are those kind of broken down loads that um, are from these larger point loads. So we don't really have a lot of great information about what this point load does on this particular diaphragm, but we really want to understand, okay, what's the load then that's going to be applied to the top of the wall in this particular case? So if I go ahead and turn off the loads, now if I look at our load cases, we have four new load cases created for us. The first is that BLC-8. So we can see that BLC-8 again was that wind load and it's that, that point load. And so if we go ahead and choose that transient load, we now basically have the load as it's broken down. So from that point load, we took then load as a kit per linear foot and applied it to all of the lateral resisting system elements in that particular plane. And so in this case, it's the top of these concrete walls. So at the top of these concrete walls for this flexible diaphragm, because of tributary width or tributary area, we have these values um, in kips per linear foot of load in the X direction. Now, if we switch, we'd have the same thing in the Y direction. And again, if we have like an earthquake, an, you know, an earthquake load, we'd have the same thing in those different directions there. So we can see that based on that tributary width for that particular floor. Now for the rigid diaphragms, because everything is rigidly connected, it's just dragging the load through. So there's no breakdown of load into these transient loads, nor is there going to be uh, low, because we're not meshing that slab because it's not a semi-rigid slab, there's, there's no need for uh, a mesh either. But we can actually go ahead and look at the mesh on this slab for this semi-rigid diaphragm. So I'm gonna go into my view settings and I'm gonna go to the diaphragms tab in this case and I'm gonna show the mesh so we can first see the mesh that's created here in this particular slab. So it is truly taking this diaphragm and breaking it into essentially two inch concrete plates. Now we can't manipulate or change these interior concrete plates because this is something that's internal to the diaphragm just like you would find in wall panels. But we can go ahead and turn on the contour plot. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the contour plot for the in-plane shear force on this particular member. And so now we can see, okay, here is that in-plane shear force that's being kind of drugged through the member based on these semi-rigid diaphragm loads, right? And so as a result, you know, we can see, okay, here's a semi-rigid diaphragm load applied to the, the plate. And because of that, we have this diaphragm plane, you know, kips per linear foot. And so we can see this, you know, where we've got some, uh, some distribution here where we've got some concentrated, some concentrating of loads based on how the element is connected to other elements. Um, and this is all based on the semi-rigid nature of this particular thing. Now I'm also gonna go ahead really quickly and let's go ahead and close out, um, a close out of RISA 3D. So I'm gonna close out of RISA 3D here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up our, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the newest version of RISA 3D. So I'm gonna open up RISA 3D version 18. And I'm gonna go ahead and use version 18 to just show how we can apply diaphragms on if we're just using RISA 3D. So if we're not using um, anything uh, attached to RISA floor, if we don't have a building model that's attached to RISA floor, we can go ahead and just use uh, RISA 3D to apply a rigid diaphragm. So we don't have rigid or flexible, dia or excuse me, we don't have flexible diaphragms um, as they exist in RISA floor in RISA 3D, but we do have the ability to create rigid diaphragms. So here with RISA uh, 3D open, I can go ahead to the diaphragms tab and we can see that rigid diaphragms can be applied based on a node. We can select a node and then choose a plane. So right now, if I go ahead and turn on the diaphragms, oops, go ahead and turn on the visibility of the diaphragms, we have 
diaphragm is visible, we have a diaphragm assigned to that first lower level. But I want to assign a diaphragm at this upper level as well. And so if I turn on my node labels here and turn off my rendering here, we can see, okay, based on node five maybe, I can come into my diaphragms and say, create a new line, I created too many here. So let's go ahead and just delete this row. I can say at node five, in the XZ plane, I want to create another diaphragm. And indeed, that's what we've created here. And so we have that diaphragm for us created. One thing that I wanted to make mention of is that we do have a new release of uh, Risa 3D coming out in the coming months. And one of the new features in that release will be uh, the ability to use orthotropic plates. And so people ask all the time how we can do semi-rigid or flexible or, you know, kind of mimic a, you know, uh, a metal deck in Risa 3D. So right now, if you wanted to set up a semi-rigid diaphragm, you know, we could create a concrete plated structure on the, on the slab that would just function as a bunch of plates. And you could apply load to those plates and then kind of use that as a semi-rigid diaphragm. But if you wanted to create more of a flexible diaphragm or a diaphragm that really acted in one primary direction, because you only have use of isotropic plates, you really can't do that today. But in the latest, in the upcoming version, we'll have orthotropic plates, will allow, which will allow you to modify the stiffness in various directions. And so you'll be able to say, hey, I actually want to simulate this metal deck. I want to basically distribute load in one primary direction based on the stiffness of this particular element. And then therefore you can get a much better kind of uh, approximation of how load would be transferred um, in a flexible diaphragm in a Risa 3D model without having to have anything tied to Risa floor. So with that, uh, we've kind of gone through the basics of using uh, diaphragms in the Risa suite of softwares, whether it's in Risa floor or talking about what we can do in Risa 3D. If you have any other questions for us, uh, feel free to reach out to our support group. They're always available to answer your questions either via phone or by email. Um, that email address is support at risa.com. Otherwise, please uh, you know, keep on subscribing, keep on watching our Risa Live uh, sessions every Thursday, and uh, we hope you see you next time.